skip a couple of chapters, or verses, excuse me, and uh, we're going to land in verse 23. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah. Genesis 40. We'll start off in, in verse 1. Amen. Genesis 40 in verse 1. The Bible says, it came, and it came to pass, I just like that right there, and it came to pass that after these things, that the butler of the king of Egypt, and that and his baker had offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was wroth with the two of his officials, again against the chief butlers, and against the chief bakers. And he put them in the ward in the house of the captain, captain of the guard, in the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them, and they continued a season in ward. And they dreamt a dream, both of them, each man his dream. In one night, each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in prison. And Joseph came in, in unto them in the morning and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officials that were with him in, in the ward, of the, of the Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sad today? And they said unto him, We have dreamt a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph says unto them, Do not interpretation belong to God. Tell me, I pray you. The chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said, and said unto him, In my dream, behold, a vine was before me. The vine, was, 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 the vine were three branches, and, it, and as, it stood, as it thought, brought it, it budded, and, and her, her, bos her bosoms shot forth, the clusters thereof uh, brought forth ripe grapes. Joseph, uh, Pharaoh's cup was in my hand. I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup. I gave it to the, to the cup. I gave the cup unto Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph says unto him, this is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thy head, restore thee into thy place, and thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hands after the former manner where thou was his butler. But think of me when it shall be well with thee, and show kindness, I pray thee, unto me, and make a mention of me unto Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house." For indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews. And, they all, and, 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 and here, also, here also have I done nothing that should put me into this dungeon. Then the Bible talks about how the, the chief baker saw the interpretation was good. He says unto, unto Joseph, I also, I also was in my dream, and behold, I had three baskets, three white baskets on my head. Now skip down, skip down to verse 20. And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, he made a feast unto all his servants, and he lifted up the head of the chief uh, butler and of the chief baker among his servants, he restored the chief butler into, unto his butlership again, and he gave the cup unto Pharaoh's hand. But the hand, but he hung the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted, uh, interpreted to, to them, 
Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph but forgot him. And you can stop right there. This morning, I, I want to talk about, and really kicked it off last week. Um, just bring me down just a little bit. I think I got a little bit of bass in here. I just want the whole house to be filled. Um, uh, and and, and I kind of started off last week, but I want to I wanna really um, touch a couple of things that I may not have touched on last week. Uh, and, and that is... The, the subject is uh, the distinctive nature of the blessing. The distinctive nature of the blessing. Now, the reason why we're talking about um, Joseph was because the Lord spoke to me. He said, if my people will apply the principles in Joseph's life, they will be successful. If my people would apply the principles in Joseph's life, they will, not might, will be successful. So what, what, what happens? So Joseph now becomes a, a backdrop for all of us to follow. Are you following me now? It, it, that, that if I would just apply, you know, for, for, if I would just do what I see Joseph does. If I would just do what I see that Joseph did in the Bible, I will be successful. Somebody look at your neighbor and just tell him, just for the, first, for, the first, for the very first time, just tell him, just do what Joseph did. Just, just, just do what Joseph did. Yeah, yeah. Just do what Joseph did. Just do what Joseph did. And so the distinctive nature of the blessing, as we dive into this 40th chapter this morning, it's been Almost 11 years, 11 years, and Joseph is in captivity. When we first met Joseph, he is a uh, 17-year-old boy, 17-year-old boy. He, he's, not even, he's not even grown yet. 17-year-old boy, and he was talking smack. He, he's talking, he has, all, he has all the dreams in the world. He has, he has life in front of him. He has tenacity. He has boldness. He's kind of cocky. Are you following me now? Kind of cocky. He's not, he, he's not, he's brash. He's, he's not tactful. Are you following me now? He, he's so, he's so to the point. And, and, and we see that that, that youngness or that youth uh, uh, allowed his brothers to hate him. He allowed his brother. I mean, can't you, can, when I look at the book of Joseph and look at the life of Joseph or, or the book of Genesis, the life of Joseph, I can't help but to, but to draw parallel even, even now in 2022 that what happened in Joseph's life is still, is still re relevant today. That, that if you come off cocky, if you come off so short, if you come off as, as being, you know, as being all that and then some. Are you following me now? If you come off as being arrogant, people don't like you. Don't care about your gift and don't care about what you know. Just because of, your, just because of the way you came off. And people will cut you off just because of your attitude. And so we see Joseph had a whole lot of stuff going from him. He had his father that favored him. He had a coat of many colors on him. He had privilege within, 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 his, his, within his, his, his family. Are you following me now? He had all these things working for him, but Joseph did not know how to be humble. The Bible says that he, he got a dream. Now understand this, that, 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 that the Bible would pause and tell you, that his brothers envied him. They started off hating him. Then they envied him. Envy means that, that, that you are doing something that I want to do. That you are experiencing something that I want to experience. Are you following me? And you don't envy somebody except that something that is in their life. And envy and jealousy are, are almost sisters. Are you following me? And so... And so they're looking at Joseph, and, and, and they're seeing that Joseph has a dream, and none of them have dreams. Now, we're not just talking about something you conjured up, ate up. Are you following me now? We're talking about a dream from God. 
And so they envied him for that dream. Matter of fact, they, when they killed him, they did not kill him because he was arrogant. They killed him because he had dreams. Are you following me now? Now you got to, okay, 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 okay. I'm going to just jump in. Is that all right? I, I'm going to just jump in because it's, it's Labor Day weekend. You want to go? I want to go. So I'm going to just jump in. Is that all right? And so I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you, um, I'm going to give you six things, six things as to, as to how to ascertain or six things as it relates to your dreams. Six things as it relates, relates to your dream. Because again, when I talk about a dream, because, okay, 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 l l let me, let me, let me put, let, let me, let me put this in, in this, let me put this here. Joseph has a dream, and for almost 11 years, he has seen no evidence of the dream. Are you following me now? There's something burning on the inside of him that he believes is of, is of God. Matter of fact, his, 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 his father, uh, uh, Jacob, also had a dream. So, 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 so when, when, he told, when, when Joseph tells Jacob and the family the dream, the Bible says that, 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 that Jacob observed him. He checked him out. He looked at him. He's like, okay. Yeah, that 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 kind of look, that kind of sound like God to me. It kind of sounds like God because you remember the, the, the nature of Joseph's dream was that was that the, the older was going to serve the younger. And that's um that, that's the nature of Joseph's dream. But 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 also in parallel, the nature of, of Jacob's dream and his reality was that they that, that the older was going to serve the younger. So he knew, he knew that there's something, there's something, there's something about this. There's something about, 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 about what, what's happening here. Are you it, it's always, it's always in the nature of God to allow the least to be first and the first to be last. Are you following me now? It's always in the nature of God to always, always elevate the younger. I don't know why it is, but it is what it is. He's always doing that. It's not. It's not. It's not. I mean, it's not Reuben. It's Joseph. It's not. It's not Esau. It's Jacob. It's not Adam. It's Jesus. It's always in the nature of, of God to to elevate the younger. No. 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 And so now it's when we when we look in our text in chapter forty. We see Joseph is in prison. Now, we're going to talk about how he got in prison, right? Because we, 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 we somewhat talked about it last week. Because he, 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 he told this girl, the, 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 the woman in the house, he told her no more than once. Hmm. You got to be willing to say no more than once. The, the problem is we, we say no, but the next time we, we say, well, 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 why don't you just come on in? And, and we yield. I, and there's no victory that way. The victory is in keep saying no. I, you follow me? And so this, this, the Bible tells you and I that she came again and again. Again and again. Understand this. The enemy is not going to come at you one time. Hmm. No, he's going to keep coming at you. I, you follow me now? And, and the answer, and the, 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 the reason why the enemy is coming at you is it, it's been, it's because that the nature of the test is that you've been built, you have been built to succeed. And you follow me now? That, that if you are tempted, you are tempted because you have it on the inside of you to pass that test. Now you may have not passed it, but you have it on the inside of you to pass that test. I, I, you follow me now? The Bible says, and let's turn here, since I'm here, let's, let's go to 1 first, first Corinthians chapter, chapter 10. I want you to see this. Well, somebody say, well, well, Pastor, th that donut just whooping on me every week. <laughs> oh, I'm just yielding every week. I'm just yielding. Well, you have it on the inside of you to say no. Okay, let me give you this to help you out, okay? L l let me give you this because you, this, you, this is what your faith got to stand in. Hey, you follow me now. Notice what it says in, in, in 2 Corinthians 10 and, and, verse, and verse 13. 
and, and put a clock on me. I, I want to go maybe about 30, 40 minutes and I'm done. Amen. And so you just, again, I'm going to be quick and, and, and short. Are you follow me now? now? Now, 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 13, it says this. There hath no, there hath no temptation taken, taken you, but such as, is, such as is common to man. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is what? Common to man. What does that mean? It means if you're tempted, well, let me, let, me, let, me, let me backtrack. It means what you're going through is not unique. It's common. Well, Pastor, I'm feeling stuff. I'm, I'm looking at stuff. I, I, I'm, I, I'm yielding to stuff. It's common. So you're not special. Are you following me now? Because the enemy will want you to think that, no, it's only you. No, no. The temptation is common to man. Everybody's tempted. Okay, okay. Let, let's keep reading. They had no, temp they had no temptation taking you, but such as is what? Common to man. It's common to man. What you're feeling, what you, what you, what, what you want to get, what you don't have, what you're desiring is all common to man. But God is faithful. No, 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 God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but with, but with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to do what? To bear it. What does that mean? It means if there's a temptation, there's a door that, that will get you out of the temptation. Are you following me now? Yeah. The, 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 the thing is, we don't look for the door. You got to look for the door. Yeah, yeah. You got you to look for the door. Now, are you following me now? The door may be somebody, you're about to do something that you shouldn't be doing, and somebody called you. That's the door. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your phone suddenly rang. That's the door. Hmm? Somebody interrupted the conversation. That's the door. Are you following me now? You know, you know I, 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 somehow you say, you say well, yeah, you can, you can come over, but I haven't, I haven't. That's the door. Are you following me now? But the, the problem is we keep yielding instead of resisting. Yeah, we keep yielding. Yeah, yeah, you're about to get upset. Are you following me now? And and the door the, the door is now let, 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 let me let, let me not let me not let me not raise raise my blood pressure up. Let me bring this down. Let me a soft answer turns away wrath. That's the door. Are you following me now? But but the problem is we yield and we go ahead first. <laughs> go ahead first. Hmm. Are you, are you say, and you say things like, you say things, well, I'm, I might as well just, you know, I might as well just go ahead and do it. I'm already, I'm already in it. A anybody know what I'm talking about? Now, now, just keep looking at the blue chairs. Ain't nobody going to know I'm talking about you. Are you following me now? But, that, but, but with the temptation, there's a way of escape. If you're tempted, you, if you tempted and you yielded, you did not, you, you, you neglected the door that was provided in that temptation. Okay, okay, now James, let's go to James, James chapter 1. Because I want you to see that there is a, there is a reward for having passed this test. Hmm? There is a reward. In other words, you can't just keep going on forever yielding to the same thing. If you do, you, you have derailed your blessing. Are you following me now? You have, you have postponed what God wants to do in your life. Because you, your sim temptations are simply tests. Telling God that you're, you're ready for the next level. I, I said temptations are simply tests telling God and, 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 and also notifying yourself that you're ready for the next level. The fact that you are yielding to sin, yielding to that temptation, tells you, tells you that you are not ready for where you're believing God to take you to. Okay, let me show you this. 
lest people begin to say, okay, uh, show me Bible. I'll I show you Bible, okay? First, uh, James chapter 1. Now, James is the half-brother of Jesus. Hmm? Okay, let me, let me say, James, James and Jesus share the same mama. So whenever you look at James, you're looking at inside information. This is, this is beyond just 12 disciples. This is, he has seen Jesus, I mean, he has seen Jesus in his early years. Are you following me? So James tells you, it says this, it says this in verse, in James chapter 1, and, uh, hmm, and let's look at verse, I want to, I want to jump, I want to, okay, might as well go to verse 12. I do, I could read a couple of these verses here. Um, um, well, well, let's, let's look at verse 5. Just, just, I, I'm going to just, I'm going I'm to just give you a little bonus here. Is that all right? Okay, okay, okay. Oh, well, let's start in verse 2. Might as well start in verse 2. Okay, okay. It says, my, my brethren... Count it all joy when you fall into what? What? Various trials. Okay, another translation says diverse what? Temptations. Okay, are you fine? So we're talking about the same thing. So you're not going to just be tempted in one area. You're going to have diverse temptations. That, somebody say diverse. Yeah, it means many, many. Yeah, 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 many. Now, there's some temptation that are going to come. There's some temptation that's going to come at you that it ain't even, it don't even bother you. It ain't even bother. It's not, it's not your cup of tea, but yet it did come. It's like somebody trying to tempt me to, it's somebody trying to tempt me to steal money. That's not my thing. You put a million dollars in front of me. It don't, it don't, it, you, you'll find it where you, where you, where you, where you left it. Are you following me now? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, well, somebody said, well, Pastor, what's your thing? Worry about your own self. Worry about yourself. Worry, <laughs> worry about yourself. <laughs> are, are you following me now? Now, 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 let's keep reading. It says, it says, knowing this, it says this, brethren, count it all joy when you fall in. Now, it says count it all joy. That means James got to be looking at something else because I would look at it as anguish. Why, am, why is this thing happening to me? Anguish. Stressed out. I don't want it. Are you following me? But James says, counting all joy. So that means James, or, James is looking at the other side of the coin that we're not looking at. Are you following me now? You know, you know worry or, 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 or lust. Or, or un, whatever it is that is that is unlike God is temptation causing you to yield. And James says, I gotta count no joy. Count no joy. Because there's something else I don't I need to be looking at that my flesh or my or, 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 or my con, current condition is not looking at. Okay, let, 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 let's look at this. It says, it says, it says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, knowing this. So you've got to know this to count it all joy. Notice what it says. That the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect, entire. One to nothing, what does that mean? It, it, means, it means your faith is going to be tested. Hmm? It means when you say you got faith, God's going to test your faith. It's, oh, let me, let, me, let me use another language. God is going to allow your faith to be tested. Yeah. Yeah, how much do you love God? Or do you love that thing more than you love God? Hmm? I, I said, how much do you love God? Or do you love that thing more than you love God? If you keep yielding to that thing, that thing has you and not God. Okay, okay. Notice what it says. It, it, it says, it says, it says, it says, then it goes on to say this. But if any man, if, 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 if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God that give it to, to all men liberally and abrade it not, but let him uh, that it shall be given. Let him ask in faith, not wavering, for he that wavered is like a wave. Of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. 
But let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord, for a double-minded man is what? Unstable in all his ways. Unstable. You're going to do this, you're going to do that. You're going to do this, you're going to do that, you're going to do this. You're gonna, what are you going to do? You're double-minded. Bible talks about being single-minded. Single-minded. Are you following me? You can't do everything, so you've got to be single-minded. Are you following me now? Now, single-minded don't mean one thing. But it, seems, but, it also, but, it, but it does mean one focus. Okay, okay, I'm going to explore that in just a minute. Then it goes on to say verse 12. Let's jump on to verse 12. Let, let's go to verse 12. It says, blessed is the man that does what? And, ble and blessed means empowered to prosper. Empowered to excel. Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord had promised to them that love him. This is what we're missing. When you yield, you don't get the crown of life. Hmm? When you yield, I, 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 you find, when you yield, what happens? You don't get the crown of life. Are you following me now? When you, when you yield, what happens is, is that you, 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 you have now rescheduled your blessing when you yield. Okay, 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 okay. Notice what it says. This. Notice what it says. Blessed is the, somebody say blessed. Come on, come on, say blessed. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation for when he is tried. When he's tried. When he's tried. When he's tried. Blessed is the man that endures. Other words, other words the, the temptation is there to try you. I said it's there to try you. Hmm? It's there to try. It's going to try you to see if, the, if, what, if what you're believing in God for, if, if, if you have what it takes to, get to, to go to the other side. Let, let, let me put it that way. Hmm? Okay, okay. Notice what it says. It, it says, it says, it says, blessed is the man, well, in James chapter 1 verse 12, blessed is the man that endured temptation, for when he is tried, he shall, he, shall, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord had promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt he any man. But every man, somebody say every man. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. When lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, does what? Bring forth death. So now we see why, why now we see why Joseph would, 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 now, would now back up and say, I'm not going to do this. Because he knows he knows what, what, what's happening here. He, he knows what, what, what's happening here is, is going to bring forth sin. And what happened? It's going to bring forth death. So, 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 so we know. So, so the reason why we see Joseph in Genesis 30, the reason why we see him say, I cannot do this against my God, is because he knows there's a crown for him. He knows. Now, let me say this. Just because you do something right doesn't mean you're going to see the immediate result. Hmm? It doesn't mean you're going to see the immediate result. Okay, so, 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 Joseph is in this man's house called Potiphar. Potiphar's name means whom, whom, whom Ra has dedicated, or dedicated to Ra. Ra is the sun god. Are you following me now? So he is in the house of Potiphar. Potiphar is an Egyptian. The Bible says that he's an, he's an officer to Pharaoh. 
He's an officer to, to Pharaoh, and the Hebraic word for officer means a eunuch. He's a eunuch. Now we see why his wife is looking at Joseph all, all cockeyed, all cross-eyed. Why? Because she has needs. Are you following me? Now it's unclear, it's unclear if, if, if Potiphar got married and became a eunuch, or he, or he, or he was, or, 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 or he was a eunuch before he got married, or he was a eunuch after he got married. That's unclear. In other words, did he get married? Then he became a eunuch because of social status with the Pharaoh. Hmm? Or, or did he, or was he a eunuch? To begin with, and because she wanted social status and she got married to him, ignoring her feelings. However, the Bible is true, is real, that this woman had some kind of sexual tendencies to, to Joseph. Something in her marriage was not being fulfilled. Are you, are you following me now? No, 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 whatever it is. Now, now, we know what it is in Joseph's case, but, but what, is, what is it in your relationships that is not being fulfilled? But because whatever that is, that's what the enemy is going to try to tempt you in. Are you following me now? And so you've got to track and say, what is it in my, in my relationships that is not, okay, 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 that is not being met because that thing has the tendency of tripping me up, of tripping me up. Okay, 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 okay. And so, so, okay, okay. And so, Joseph would look at this woman and tell, and tell her, he would tell her, I cannot, I, can, I cannot do this, I cannot do this against my God. I believe Joseph had foresight on blessed is the man that endures temptation because when he is tried, he will receive the crown of life. There's a crown. So whenever you're tempted, it's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not if you're going to be tempted, it's when you're going to be tempted. Hmm? Some, of us, some of us, it's a daily thing. Again, again, when I talk about temptation or lust, it's not just sexual things. Lust simply means pressure to the flesh. Pressure to the flesh. I said it simply means what? Pressure to the flesh that will cause you that will cause you to do something you don't want to do. Some of us have lust of the mouth. We can't keep our mouth shut. Are you? I want, I want to show you that it's not just sexual sins. It's whatever you go. It's whatever that is. It's whatever you don't have control of. That's you, that's. It's pressure applied to the place that you're vulnerable. Hmm? Yeah. So, okay, okay, I, I, didn't, I didn't come to preach that this morning, uh, so, 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 so I'm so going to just, just jump back into my text, is that all right? And so in Genesis 30, 39, we see J J Joseph is now in part of his house, and, I, and I, if you're following along with us, I don't want to re-preach what I've already re-preached already, and, and, so, and so he's in, he's in part of his house because his, his brothers sold him into slavery, is that all right? He sold him into slavery. And so he's there. This woman now, he's now being promoted. He's now being blessed. He's now being elevated. Are you following? Because the nature of the blessing, what are we talking about? We're talking about the, the, the distinctive nature of what? The blessing. The distinctive nature of what? The blessing. What does that mean? It means when the blessing is on somebody, you can see it. Yeah, yeah. The distinctive nature of the blessing. That you don't, have to, you don't have to wonder if the blessing is on him. You can see it. It's notable. It's tangible. It's workable. Are you following? It's visible. Okay, okay. Now, now. The Bible, okay, let's, let's go to Genesis 39. So, so I, I want to I wanna, I wanna show you this. So you can start looking for it in your life. Hmm. What do I say? I said the Lord said if you will apply the principles or if you will do what Joseph did, you will be successful. If you will do what Joseph did, you will be successful. 
So what does that mean? It means if I just do, if I just, if I just track Joseph and do what Joseph did, I will be so. Number one, Joseph started young. He started young. At 17 years old, he started young. You've got to start young. You say, oh, Pastor, I'm in my 40s. Well, jump, you, you, you know, you might as well you just jump on board then. Are you following me now? You can't make excuses for what, what, what you don't have or what you didn't do. You got to jump in there and, and, and make the, and you follow me now, and make the best of what you've got. Okay, you got to do what? You got to start young. Now, now in, 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 in Genesis 39, and I'm, I'm on my way to 40, and I've got, I've got to get to 40 today. Notice what it says. It says, it says in verse, in, in Joseph, uh, in Genesis 39, and um, I might as well start in verse 1. Let me start in verse 1, just read on down. It says, and Joseph was brought down, he was brought down to, to Egypt. I've, I've talked about that last week. He was brought down. Every time you go to Egypt, you go down. I say anytime you go to Egypt, you go down. Egypt is where God is not. Egypt, Egypt is, what, is where it looks, it, looks, it, looks, it looks favorable on the other side. Egypt is, what, is where God has not called you to. Egypt is, a place, Egypt is a place that gives you a duality. A duality means it, it, it gives you refuge at the same time it gives you, it gives you bondage. Egypt is a place that keeps you longer than you want to stay. It takes you further than you want to go. It causes you, it causes you to, 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 to compromise your stance with God. You're in Egypt. Are you following me now? You're in Egypt. Okay, okay. It, it says this. Potiphar, an officer, we said that word was eunuch, a pharaoh, the captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites. The Ishmaelites were kinfolks to Joseph. Kinfolks, they were, they were his cousins. Are you following me now? Okay, okay. What does that mean? It means that just because they're, just because they're skin to you doesn't mean they're kin to you. I said just because they're skin to you doesn't mean they're kin to you. Not everybody's celebrating your blessings. Not everybody's celebrating your dreams. Hmm? His own brother sold him into slavery. Hmm? Why? Why? Because, be, be, because, they, because they envied him and because he was arrogant too. So we talked about, we talked about social intelligence uh, or emotional intelligence. Anybody got that? We talked about, you remember that? We talked about emotional intelligence. You got to know who hates you. You can't walk up in a room and be all naive. No, nor, should you, nor should you try to ascribe emotions that are not there. Are you following me now? Because some of us, has the, we have the gift of suspiciousness. The eighth, the ninth, the, the tenth gift of suspicion. Every you suspicious about everybody. Hmm? You got to take people for face value. But you're going to know, you're going to know what if they don't like you. Hmm? You can't be in their house eating. Are you, you're going to know if somebody say, I'm going to know. Says, Come on. I'm going to know if they don't like me. Yeah, you're going to know if they don't like you. Okay, okay, okay. So we talked about we talked about social social. We talked about emotional intelligence, and I I, I can't. I'm not going to repreach that. Just go listen to the message. It, it will bless you. Trust me, it will bless you. The, the, then let's go. It says it says in verse two, and the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. The Lord was with Joseph. The Lord was with now. now the, the Lord is L O R D. It's the word. Yod Yod Hey Vav Hey. It's it's the covenant name of God. The Hebrews don't even pronounce that name. It's too awesome for that for them to pronounce. Yod Hey Vav Hey. It is it is the essence of who God is. It says the Lord. So 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 okay okay. So track with me here. He's in prison. No, no, actually, in this place, he's in, he's in, he, he's in, he's in Potiphar's house. He's a servant. He does not even own the shirt on his back. Yet the Bible says that he was prosperous. Hmm? The Bible says he was prosperous. So prosperity 
has really nothing to do with what you've got. It has everything to do with who you know. Are you following me now? So, so if I'm going to be prosperous, first of all, right off the gate, I have to understand that if I don't know God, I cannot be prosperous. Are you following me now? That I've got to, that I have to have a relationship with God if I'm going to be prosperous. Okay, okay. Notice what it says. It says, it says, the Lord was, so, 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 so we know somebody check, somebody put a check mark. and say, well, I have a relationship with God. They got a check mark. Okay. I've got a relationship. Great, great. I'm glad you do. Okay. I have a relationship with God. Let's keep tracking. So, no, 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 notice what it says. It says, he was in the house. He was in the house of the, his master, the Egyptian. So he had somebody else over him. I, I know. He has somebody else over him. Hmm? What does that mean? It means you don't have to start your own business to be prosperous. Because the truth is, some of us are not start, the, some of us are not start our own business, our, 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 our persons. What am I saying? You don't have it, you don't have it on the ends. You don't have the, you don't have the, um, the work ethics to start your own. You don't have it. People that start their own, they have a go-get-it mentality. They're, they're, they're up way before you. Way before you're rolling off the bed, they're already up. 6.30, they're already at work, and you're thinking about waking up. I said 6.30, they're at work, and you're thinking about waking up. So, 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 so everybody, and let me... Let me let me help you. Because Joseph was never number one in, ev in any fear, any fear of influence he was or any area he was, he was never one, number one. Y'all, y'all, listen, listen to me. Okay. He was never number one, yet he was blessed. I, I, you follow me now? Okay, okay. I'm not saying don't start your own. I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, did God tell you to start your own? Yeah. Yeah, did, did, did God tell you to start your own? Because if he didn't tell you to start your own, you're going to find yourself in a place where, you're, where you ought not be. Struggling. Okay, 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 okay. Now let's, let's keep going. It says, his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to do what? To prosper in his hand. His master saw. His master what? Saw. Let me tell you what he did not see. He did not see goosebumps. Hmm? He did not see smokes and mirrors. Hmm? He did not see Joseph just lifting his hands and saying, Oh, hallelujah! How I love you, God! Oh, that don't impress him. Matter of fact, are you following? Matter of fact, he made a deduct pay because Joseph was doing that on his dime. Are you following me now? His master did what? He saw. He saw. Now, 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 is this, now, is this just unique to uh, Joseph's life? Or is this, is this a characteristic of the blessing? Because we're, we're, we're talking about the distinctive nature of the blessing. What does that mean? It means if I see it in Joseph's life, I ought to see it in somebody else's life that has the blessing. Is that, is that true? Okay, so, so with that thought, let's go to uh, Genesis. G Genesis, um, hmm. Ah. Let's go to Genesis 20, 21. Genesis 21. Genesis 21. Genesis 21. And let's look at verse Verse 22, because I, I, I was, I'm, I'm supposed to be done right now, but, 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 but I'm going to give you a little bit more. Give you a little bit more. Since you, I'm going to give you a little more. Okay, is that all right? I'm going to give you a little more. Okay, Genesis 21, verse 22. Notice what it says. Notice what it says. It says, and, and it came to pass, it came to pass that at the time that Abimelech and Philskol, Phil Phil, Phil the chief captain of, of the host, spake unto who? Abraham saying, God is with thee in all that thou doest. He saw something. 
God is what is with you. In other words, if the blessing is on you, they ought to see God on the ends. They ought to see God with you. Now, what does that mean? It doesn't mean that they're going to see evident. They, 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 it doesn't mean they're going to see they're going to see Father God on your life because God is spirit. Are you following me? And so they can't see they can't see Father God on your life. But what they can see is your your productivity. What they can see is your work ethics. What they can see is your faithfulness. What they can see is your diligence. What they can see, are you following me, is your honesty. What they, what they can see is your what? Integrity. Do people see God on your life? Do they see God on your life? Do they see the fruit of the spirit, the love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the kindness, the goodness, the gentleness, and the what? The self-control. Do they see God on your life? What do they see when they see you? What do they see when they see you? The, the, Forget you, for, for, uh, forget you going to your job with a t-shirt on talking about I'm saved. Just be saved. I don't, you ain't got to tell me what you are. Just be saved. Just be it. I, if I, I don't have to announce I'm a man. I just, I just got to be a man. I, are you following me now? If you got to announce something, if you got to announce that you're something, it probably means you're really not. Probably means you're really not. Okay, okay, let me keep going, let me keep going. Okay, okay, okay. Genesis 26, verse, Genesis 26, verse, verse, verse 27. Genesis 26, verse 27. Genesis 26, verse 27. I really, really, okay. Genesis 26, verse 27. See what it says. It says this. And Abimelech went to, to Genesis 26, verse, but yeah, well, well, let's start in verse 26. Might as well start there. Genesis 26, verse 26. Abimelech went unto Gerar and what? And Ahuza, 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 or something, something of that nature, one of the friends of Piscol, the chief captain of the army. And Isaac says unto them, Wherefore come ye to me, seeing you hate me, and have sent me away from you? You see that? Emotional what? Intelligence. He knew they hated him. Some folks hate you and you just, you, you just all smile. You, you, don't, you can't even pick it up. You just all, 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 all 232 smiling. And they, they, they plotting how they're going to kill you as you're coming. I said they're plotting how they're going to kill you as you're coming. Emotional intelligence. Assess where you are. Assess where you are. Now, 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 let me say what I'm not saying. I'm not saying because they're another color, they don't like you. So, so, so hear me right. Are you following me now? Even the folks in your, even the folks that, that, that look like you don't like you. Now, you got to be honest. Why don't they like me? Because sometimes it's because you're cocky. And you're unlikable. Are you following me now? And you're mean. And you're hateful. Are you following me now? And you're lazy. Hmm? You don't get your work done. You're not truthful. You're not honest. Why don't they like you? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. You're going to think when you come here. Okay. 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 Notice, notice what it says. It says, it says this. It says, it says, Isaac says unto them, wherefore, wherefore come ye to me, seeing you hate me, and have sent me away from you. Notice what it says. It says, and they said, we, we, saw, we, we saw certainly. He said, without, this is not without, this is not. We saw it. We, what, no, what did they say? They said, we saw certainly that the Lord was with thee. And we said, let there be no now an art between us, even between us and thee. Let us make a covenant with thee. Now, what did they see? They saw whatever Isaac did prospered. That's what they saw. Notice, part of the blessing is that he blesses the works of your hands. So whatever your hands is be, whatever your hands find to do ought to be blessed. 
Are you following me now? What does that mean? It means that I cannot begin to continue to accept mediocrity or failure with what's happening, what, with what is working in my hands. That I've got to employ or I've got to, I've got to invoke the blessing because what's working, what is in my hands ought to be working. Are you following me now? You ought to be working. Amen. Okay, okay. Now go back to Genesis 39 as we move our way, as we, as, we, as we make our way back to 40. And I got to close. Genesis 39. Notice what it says. Notice what it says. And Joseph found faith. He found, notice, no, it, says, it, says, it says, his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to do what? To prosper in his hands. What's in your hands? Yeah, what's in your hands? His hands means ownership. His hands, ownership. It's in his hands, ownership. In other words, whatever this, 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 this task I've been, I've been given this task, so I've got to own it. I can't put enough on somebody else. Now, what, now I, I just love, okay, okay, I just love Joseph because you never see Joseph complain about his personal vendetta. They did him wrong. They sold him. He's 17 years old. He's in a place that he's never been before, and you never see this boy crying. Some of us cry too much. We cry too much. You complain too much. You never see this 17 years old boy and he's in Potiphar's house handling business. He didn't say, he didn't say, oh, poor me. He didn't say, my lot in life. He, he didn't say, oh, why me? Okay, what did we say? We said, if we do what Joseph did, hmm? ain't that what the Lord told me? If you do what Joseph did, what happens? You're going to be successful. Hmm? He never went to his place of employment throwing out his guts. Pharaoh never knew that he was once free. Excuse me, uh, Potiphar never knew that he was once free. Now, now even, okay, kind of track with me. That, that he, he was sold to slavery. He was sold into slavery by his own brothers to his cousins. And nobody really backtracked to say, is this a slave? Do we even have the right to buy him in the first place? Talking about, talking about being wrong in the highest order. And somebody just talked about you and now you, you can't sleep. Hmm? But my cousin talked about me. But my cousin don't like me. Well, that's, at least that's the one you know. You got five more that don't like you that you don't know. You follow me now. Talk about being wrong on the highest order. Okay, okay, I, I got to keep going. Now, okay, okay, so, 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 so Joseph is now in Potiphar's house. He's not, he has not mentioned to Pharaoh one time, to Potiphar one time that he's not supposed to be there. He's handling business. He's hand look at your neighbor and just, just look at him and say, handle your business, handle, handle your business, handle your business, handle your business. Handle your business. Handle your business. Amen. Handle your business. Okay, okay, okay. I, I got to go. I got to go. Notice what it says. It says, Joseph found grace in, in his sight and he served him. You've got to learn how to serve. You've got to learn how to serve. How to serve. You've got to learn how to serve. That's not just in church. That's at home. Learn how to serve. Don't look to be served, but learn how to serve. Teach your kids how to serve. How to serve one another. Hmm? If you don't teach them where they're going to get it from. Hmm? And so they, they go out of your house being plump fools because they don't know how to serve. They got this entitlement mentality. Are you following me now? You got to teach him how to serve. But, it also should, but you also have to model it. You also have to what? Model it. 
Learn how to serve each other. Right? Ain't, well, ain't no man going to tell me what, ain't no man going to tell me what to do. But then you should have, you should have stayed single. Ain't no woman going to tell me what to do. Then you should have stayed single. Are you following me now? Because part of, part of, part of relationship is you got to serve each other. Okay, 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 okay. Then it says this. It says, it says, the Lord blessed Joseph, the, the, Egyptians, the Egyptians house for Joseph's sake. The blessing of the Lord was, was upon his house. Uh, okay, and, and, and he left all that he had. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, hear me, hear me, because I, I, I got to go. It's, 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 uh, it's Labor Day weekend, half the church gone, and, and I want to be gone too. Is that all right? Okay, 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 okay. So, 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 here is Joseph. Here is Joseph. He's over here. The blessing of God is flowing. Everybody's getting blessed, Okay. Increase is happening in people's life. His name means Yosab, Yoseb. Yoseb in the Hebrew means to increase or to add. To increase or to add. That's his name. Are you following me now? And he's, everybody's being blessed. And suddenly the, the woman gets, you know, kind of looks at him. And now Joseph, now the Bible pauses to tell you that Joseph was fine. He was fine. He wasn't cute, the boy was fine. Now, when the Bible says you're fine, you, you best believe he's fine. It's the kind of one when, it's the kind of one you look at him and you're like, man, that boy, that boy cute, boy. That's a fine, that's a fine man. Are you following me now? Yeah, he's, th th that's the kind of man he was. Built to all get out. Looking good, Carly here. Are you following me now? Straight, tall. Are you following me now? The kind of one that make a, a woman's beat, heartbeat just, just by looking at him. She's, she's just like, are you? That's the kind of man he was. Yeah, yeah. But he also, the, the, the issue with Joseph was he loved God. So he wasn't going to fool around. And she, couldn't, she could not accept no for an answer. Are you following me now? You know, now she won't. It, she won ugly because if, it, if she were ugly, it, won't be a, it wouldn't have been a temptation. She was cute too. Are you following me now? But, but, but what happened? Joseph stood his ground because he was integrous. Integrity. Okay, integrity. Let's, let's look at that. Let's look at that. Integrity. Somebody say integrity. Integrity, because we said, we said, if we'll do what Joseph did, what happens? Come on now, what happens? We'll, we'll, we'll be successful. If we'll do what Joseph did, what happens? C come on, we'll, we'll, we'll be successful. If we'll do what Joseph did, what happens? There you go, we'll be successful. Okay, so Joseph, J J Joseph was a man of what? Integrity. Somebody say integrity. Integrity comes from the word integer. Integer means whole, 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 that I'm not broken in this area, and I don't need you, I don't need your permission to be whole in this area. I'm whole in this area because I have a relationship with God. Are you following me now? Okay, okay. The Bible says this in Proverbs 11 verse 3, it says this. The integrity of the upright guides them. The crookedness of the tetras, of the te te tetras destroys them. I'll say it again. The integrity of the upright does what? Guides them. The crookedness of the te te tetras destroys them. Proverbs 20 verse 7 says it this way. The righteous who works in his in, is in the righteous who works works in his integrity, blessed are his children after him. Blessed that if I walk in integrity, it affects my children. Ain't that the case with Joseph? Yeah. If I walk in integrity, what happened? It affects my children. Okay, okay. It also says this in Proverbs 21 verse 3, the Lord is, ple is more pleased 
when we do what is right and just than when we offer him sacrifice. That when we walk in integrity, the Lord is, mu is much pleased. Are you following me now? Okay. Now, 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 Joseph has stayed in Potiphar's house. Some say eight years, nine years. We don't know. So it, it, we, we, know we know he's in captivity. We know he's in captivity for, 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 uh, 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 for 13 years. He was in prison, left by that Potiphar, uh, by that uh, 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 but chief butler. He was in prison, left in prison for two years. Are you following me now? When after he had interpreted, after he had interpreted the dream, the Bible says that butler or that, that excuse me, the uh, yeah, the, the cup bearer forgot him, forgot him for two years. We know he was seventeen when he went into captivity. And when he, stand, when he stood before Pharaoh, I'm, I'm almost done. When he, when he stood before Pharaoh, he was 30. Okay? So that's 13 years, 13 years of dreaming and not seeing anything. 13 years of a dream. 13 years of believing God. 13 years with really no evidence that what God said was going to come to pass in your life. Now, when we come into chapter 40, that's the kicker. The kicker is, the kicker is, now when I say the kicker, I'm talking about below the belt. The kicker is that you have dreamed a dream. You haven't seen an expression of the dream. Now somebody else is coming to you with a dream. What do you do with that? You've dreamed a dream and you haven't seen one ounce of God's goodness on your life. Now you've seen an expression here and there, but here you are. You've done, and, and, and you here you are because every right step you've done, every right step you've taken has only brought you down. Are you following me now? You shared your dream, you got sold in slavery. You resisted a woman, and you're now you're in prison. Every right step you make, every little step I'm, oh no, excuse me, excuse me. Okay. Every step you made, are you following me now? Every, it's always, this, what are you, you're always going down every time I obey God. And so the kicker is, the kicker is, what do I do when what I have believed God for I haven't seen an ounce of expression in my life. And now here's somebody else coming to me for me to encourage them. How can I encourage you when, I'm, when I myself don't feel encouraged? Hmm? And here it is, Joseph, he comes into that place. He comes into that place. And they said this. Now, this is, an, this is a captive audience, okay? It's a captive audience because if, if, they, if they were free, they would have found somebody else to interpret that dream. <laughs> I said, if they were free, they would have found somebody. Matter of fact, if they were free, they would have never, they would have never came in contact with Joseph. What am I saying? I'm saying Handle everything with dignity. Handle everything that is in your life with excellence. With excellence. What if Joseph was sloppy that day? After all, he did not, he did not know that his, his jail mates was his ticket out. He said, he said, he said, okay, 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 okay. They said, they said, we've got a dream. He says, well, interpretation come from God, but he also says, tell me your dream. What happened? 
Joseph knew what he was good at. He, he knew what he was good at. He, he, he did, okay, okay, okay. He, he knew what, what, what he was good at. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, help me, help me, help me. He, so he knew what he was good at. Do you know what you're good at? Hmm? Do you know what you're good at? Because if, if, you're going, if you're going to be successful like Joseph, you've got to know what you're good at. But part of knowing what you're good at is knowing what you're not good at. Are you following me now? Knowing what you're not good at. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, let me, okay, let me give you the six things and I'm done. Give you the six things and I'm done. N number, number one, number one, if you, n number one, we're talking about, we're talking about a dream. Uh, we're talking about a dream. We're talking about these men, we're talking about these men giving Joseph his dream, giving, telling them his dreams. We're talking about Joseph now taking the time to interpret the dream, even though there was no crowd, even though there was no physical evidence that, that this would have mounted up to anything. He still gave them his, he still gave them his, his, his he still gave them his excellence. He, he still gave them his, his interpretation. He still gave them what God gave him. Okay, number one, number one, if we're going to, if you're going to manifest your dreams, number one, you've got to ask God about your dream. You've got to ask God about your dreams. So, so you can't just conjure up and, and wake up one morning and say, well, pastor, this is my dream. You've got to ask God. God, what's my dream? What's my dream for, my, for this stage that I'm in? This place that I'm in. What's my dream? What, what, what's, what's the dream you have for my life? Number one. Number two. What natural, what natural skills and talents do you have? What's what flows? What what what's natural to you? What natural what natural skills and talents do you have? It would be asinine for somebody to tell me that I'm going to be a quarterback or for me to have a, a you follow me, I have a dream to be a quarterback. Well, I, don't, I don't have the skill. Like, I can catch a ball, but I can't catch a ball like Tom Brady. I can't throw a ball like, it's not, it, there's no natural, anybody ever, you know, when you were growing up, you saw people that had this natural tendencies. They could, they could jump real high. I mean, it's not that they were any brighter than you are. It was just their skill. It was, was, it was the God-given talent. What's your God-given talent? Hmm? Number three, 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 number three. Analyze and review what you're good at and what you're great at. Analyze and review. In other words, you look at it, you're like, okay, it was good for a time, but I'm not good at that no more. Analyze and review. Review means take inventory. Analyze means to assess. What am I good at? In, I'm, I'm in my 30s. I'm in my 40s. I'm in my 20s. What am I good at now? What could I do now? Are you following me now? Where am I going? What, 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 what kind of bandwidth do I have to get to where I'm going? Are you following me now? Okay, okay. Number, 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 number four, solicit godly input from others. Godly input from others. Now, don't go talk to somebody that, that don't even know God about you. But so, solicit godly input from others. Mm? Hey, hey, you've been on me. What do you think I'm good at? And they may tell you, you you're, not good in any, you're not good in any of these stuff. And that's okay. I mean, you got to be, they got to be, allow them to be honest with you. Are you following me? You know, you're not good at any of this stuff. You wasted my time, your time, and everybody else's time. Yeah. And that's the God, God honest truth. Are you following me now? You got to go, no, you're not. You, you may want to do that, honey, but you ain't good at it. Are you following me now? Okay, N number, number, number five, stay focused on your dreams. Stay focused. Now, it don't mean that you only have one thing to, to dream. But it, all, but it means that, that you, they should be related. 
or, or, or they should have they should have focus. Hmm? In other words, what am I saying? Joseph was not just good at, at, at interpreting dreams. No. He was a good administrator also. I, you follow me now? He was a good communicator also. He was also a good strategist. If I had time, I would have taken you, I would have taken you, I would have I I taken you, I, I would have taken you to the scripture where, 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 where Pharaoh gave Joseph his dream. And, 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 and Joseph interpreted, he interpreted the dream for Pharaoh, but he did not stop there. He gave Pharaoh the strategy because I'm not impressed that you have a dream. I am impressed about your strategy because a dream with no strategy is going nowhere. A dream with no strategy is going nowhere. Are you following me now? He, he gave, okay. He gave him the interpretation. Nothing happened. He gave him the strategy, the how-tos. They said, we ain't, never found no, we ain't never found nobody like this before. We go, we got, we've got to make you number. And he gave them, okay, listen, listen, listen. I, I, okay, I might, as well, I might as well jump in. He gave them the strategy. He gave them a strategy, and he didn't, he didn't have to minimize those that were, those that did not have the strategy. He didn't have to minimize them either. He gave a strategy, but in giving the strategy, he elevated everybody up. Are you following me now? He didn't say, oh, you're, you're, a, you're a wise man. You know, you're, 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 you're all are good for nothing. You all are good. I mean, why are you all living in this position? You know, you all, ain't, you all, you all, you all can't do it like I do it. You all got you all, you all, come on, come on. I'm a rebel. He ain't do none of that. He ain't do none of that. He came with humility. Gave the king, gave the king what he, what he wanted, but he also gave him what he didn't ask for. Okay. Part of the, okay, okay. You can, part of the blessing is that there, is, there has to be a distinction. You can't be like everybody else. If you're like everybody else, then you're average. Are you following me now? If you're just doing, if you're just doing the job description, you average. There has to be something that sets you apart. He gave the he gave the king the interpretation. Nothing happened. He gave him a strategy. What happened? He raised the bar. No, notice nobody told him to raise the bar. If you're gonna be like Joseph, you gotta learn to take charge. Are you following me now? As long as you're just tracking like everybody tracking, there's no distinction on your life. You've got to recognize. You have to recognize where the value is. The value is in solving the problem that nobody else can solve. That's the value. What is that? It's in every business. It's in any, every family. It's in every relation. What is that problem that nobody else can solve? Bring value to that. Are you following me now? Bring value to that. Okay, okay. Number five, number six. Be diligent in your task at hand. The Bible says that the Bible says the hand of the diligent will make rich. The Bible says, look at a man that is diligent. It says he will not stand, he will not stand with obscure man. In other words, he will stand with men of dignity. Diligence. When we look at the life of Joseph, we see this man that could have given up years ago. He could have walked, he could have, he could have, he could have said, this is not, this is not going to happen for me. This is, I'm going to be a slave. He could have said all those things out in the atmosphere. 
But this man had so much God on the inside of him. And I'm still, I'm still amazed where he got it from. Because God appeared to Abraham. God appeared to Isaac. God appeared to Jacob. But God never appeared to Joseph. God never appeared to Joseph. Yet this man had enough God to know. He had enough on the inside of him to know what was right and what was wrong. He had enough on the inside of him to say, I've got to honor God. He had enough on the inside of him to be optimistic. That's another thing. If you're going to do what Joseph did, you got to be optimistic. You can't be crying the blues. You can't be singing a sad song. You cannot see it half empty. Are you following me now? You got to be optimistic. Hope has to rise on the inside of you. You got to know that all things work together for the good. For them that love God. For them that are the called according to his purpose. It may be down right now, but it ain't always going to be there. Are you following me this morning? You've got to know there is a better tomorrow. You've got to know God be for me. Who in the world can be, who in the world and under the world and in hell can be against me? you got to know thanks be unto God, which always causes me to triumph. You've got to know I'm the head and not the tail. Above only and not beneath. You've got to know, you, you have to know thanks be unto God, which always causes me to triumph. You've got to know there's a brighter day that though my beginning be small, my latter end should greatly increase. You've got to know I can't fear because the Lord is with me. He's with me. And this man, Joseph, in this Old Testament scripture, teaches you and I that if we'll walk with God, if we'll walk with God, we may face and will face challenges, but we're going to get to the other side. The Bible says that he would say this to his brothers, you meant it for evil. But God, turn it around for my good. Because the truth is, nothing just happens. God is in the background and he's moving, weaving, and orchestrating stuff to happen in your life. In Jesus' name. Did you receive that today? Well, somebody give God praise. Come on, come on. Come on, give it to him real quick. Amen, amen. Stand to your feet. You're here today and heads are bowed, eyes are closed. And real quickly. You hear the day and you say, Pastor, God used this message to challenge me. Use this message to, to challenge me, to, to cause me to think on another level. That if I'll do what Joseph did, I'll see, I will be successful. You hear today, you say, Pastor, this, this message was for me today, and I want to acknowledge it. I want the enemy to know that this message blessed my life. If that's you this morning, and you say, Pastor, God used this message to touch me in, in an area that, that I may have not looked at. God spoke to me this morning. If that's you this morning, just raise your hand up all over the building, all over the building. Just raise your hand up. Lift it up all over the place. I see those hands. I see those hands. Father, you see your hands this morning. 
you see your people's hands this morning. I pray as they, as they, as lifted, as they have lifted their hands, that, Lord, you touch their hands where it is. I pray, that, Lord, as you, touch their, as you touch their hands, that you touch it with favor, with grace, with blessings, God. I pray, God, that you would do amazing things in their midst. I pray for a turnaround today. I pray for breakthrough today. I pray, Father, for a new beginning today, God. I pray, Father, for a, for a, a paradigm shift. I pray that their lives will never be the same. Give you the praise, give you the glory, and give you the honor. Thank you for what you have done. We celebrate you in the house. We bless you for who you are. Thank you, God, that you're making all things new. And everything works together for our good as long as we love you and we are the called according to your purpose. We declare that we are the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. Thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And we thank you for it because the just shall live by his faith. We bless you and we praise you today in Jesus' name. Somebody give God praise this morning. Come on, give God praise this morning. Come on, give God praise this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen, amen. What a blessing. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. Well, you may be seated, B. You may be seated, B. God bless you in the house of God this morning. You're here this morning. We'll just give God praise and those of us that are there. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in on today. We declare that God will richly bless you and his face will shine upon you. And if you want to sow into what God is doing, go ahead and do that. Um, the offering envelopes on your seat pocket, those that are here, those that are online, go ahead to go go to uh, credenceGA.org. Amen. CredenceGA.org and sow your seed. Uh, to the furtherance of the kingdom of God. Amen. What a blessing. Somebody give God praise and glory again. Come on, give God praise and glory again. Amen, amen. Bless the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, we love you. Thank you for tuning in, in today. And um, again, thank you for your, your present, your past, and your future given. You are helping to make it happen. Amen. We thank you for so very much for you uh, supporting this ministry in a financial way. Uh, we'll just give you, we give God praise for it. Everything you give, 100% of what you give goes into the furtherance of the kingdom of God. Nothing comes into my pocket. Everything goes into the furtherance of the kingdom of God. And so let's, let's pray real quick. Father, may the, we, we, we speak over the seed that we're sown into the kingdom of God. We declare the seed that leaves our hands does not leave our lives. It goes into the future where we find it after many days. We declare the Bible says give. And it shall be given, good measure, pressed down, shaken together. Running over shall men give into our bosom. We're given faith and we're receiving faith today. And we just declare that our lives should never be the same because we have put you in our giving. And we thank you for it. For, we thank you for manifestation of the seed sown in our lives. We bless you and we praise you today. In Jesus' name, everybody said... Amen and thank God. Amen. Give God praise. Thank you for tuning in today. We declare God's goodness and blessing over you in Jesus' name. Wednesday night we'll be fasting and praying for those of us that are going to tune in on Wednesday. We'll be fasting and praying on Wednesday. And so 6 o'clock, um, and if you would uh, make yourself known, we'll send you the link. And uh, the Lord will richly bless you. Again, God bless you and we'll see you soon. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That's right.